So, um, welcome back from the break. Um, you probably recognize me from before, Thomas Weinberg. And I'm here to talk about cash management. Um, and last year, for you who were here, we spent quite considerable time on on explaining why cash is still around. And I will kind of continue a little on that, uh, not as much as last time. The presentation has a slightly different structure from uh, Henrik's, uh, sorry, from uh, Stefan's. Uh, we will start by looking at, at us, uh, how we perform. Then I will talk about the market. And then I will come back and talk about also more about the products, how we are addressing the market trends and what's going on. Um, and starting again uh, with our vision that we have actually worked with a lot uh, during, uh, during the last year. And uh, as a part of also now building this end-to-end -end team uh, that, uh, that Henrik talked about. So our vision uh, is to, uh, to lead and co-develop the future customer payment cycle, offering best-in-class uptime and peace of mind. And in this, and in this is, is a key word, co-develop. Uh, we uh, in cash management are part of an ecosystem. Our devices will not work by itself. We, we have to fit into the ecosystem and actually making this ecosystem more efficient. So the co-development part is really important. And, and when we acquired this Cyan business some years ago, uh, we got a lot of R&D ca capabilities and, and our, uh, increased our ability for this co-development. Our mission is then as to be the experts in the complete, uh, in the complete payment cycle. Uh, we provide cost-effective, secure solutions to innovative business models. So this is also, there is a change in, in how this business is done. And we see trends going on that, that right now, instead of buying equipment, you actually buy pay-per-use and other, other ways of paying things. And we are working on all of that to innovate. Now, what is it, what is it we're talking about in brief? So we have, we have done the, our offering is, uh, is then solutions. And this is solutions for, and I should say both for notes and for coins. It's deposit and recycling. It's closed cash management, it's envelope and coin roll systems, it's uh, drive up systems, application and monitoring and, and, and the related services. And depending on the complexity of the product and the business criticality, there is a quite a large range of what these services mean. And some of our products has a very high service component and some of them have a less service component, but it's, an, it's a vital part of, of the offering. The main segments that we're dealing with is, is to retail and bank. And, and uh, as Henrik already mentioned, when we look at, at the, market, uh, the market growth, we see that we have, uh, we have a declining market within the bank sector, but we have an uh, increasing, it's moving from the bank sector into the retail and the CIT sectors. Um, so what are we, where are we uh, on the map? So we have, we have about 50,000 solutions installed globally and in operation globally. And out of them, about 15,000 units are connected to our software, where we can monitor and supervise uh, this equipment. So in, in round about some 800 billion sec is passed through our, our machinery or our, our units every year. And of course, what we actually are doing, just to take a step back, what we're doing is we're taking hard currency, notes or coins, transferring them into, into digital information that is used in different ways. And then at some point, this cash has to be transferred and moved and recounted and put back into the system because the total tally always has to go through. So that's, that's the ecosystem that we're in. Um, if we look at the figures, um, we are about 1 billion second turnover with 21% of the group, as, as already mentioned. Almost 12% EBITDA in 2017, 
uh, we had an eight percent growth uh, in uh, in 2017 in the market, as I said, where we combine the retail with a bank. That our assumption is that the total market growth is about five percent. This is nothing. If you if you try to we tried everywhere to really collect the combined uh, uh, market data, but it's really not available. So we had to combine the two, the two markets. Now, uh, and we have a manufacturing footprint. Uh, and, and again, uh, like Stefan mentioned, I think we, we, have, we have two bases. And when I say manufacturing, our, our manufacturing to large extent is, is uh, assembly. But it's then also electronics components uh, uh, manufacturing, where we actually, and I will show it later, we're building our own computers and building electronics. So it's a quite, again, quite different. And then we buy the safes, normally from, from our safe storage partners. But the, actually what we do in our factories, and that, this is a picture you can see, which is really assembly. And as somebody said, we, we're putting electronics on top of a safe. Going from a, what I what I tell Stefan, going from a stupid safe to a smart safe, <coughs> but that's an internal discussion. We <laughs> we have about 100 FTS. Uh, we are ISO 9001 cert certified, and we are actually, uh, as we speak now, uh, getting the ISO 14001 uh, certification and the OSHA 18001, and that will be completed before year end. Now, looking at the route to market, because this is, this is a very important part for us, and, and this is actually where this new structure that Henrik is talking about, this end-to-end, -end, is very important for us. Because we are, if you look on the, uh, on the, on the main market, which is into the retail, you, you can see we have, there are four different ways to go into the retailer. We can, of course, go direct, which is the old Gunnebo model, with a product we had, which, call, which you all know, the safe pay model. That's, that product has always been sold to the direct channel. When we acquired Cyan, we got, um, we got with them, came the route to market CIT. And this is now something that is very important to balance because, because the, the direct channel and the CIT channel up to now are actually using different types of products. And as we move on now, this is going to be combined, and, and we will see now that these products are going to be cross-fertilized. Then, of course, we also see, and this has been my surprise, that the banks have been very not active. There is one bank in the U.S., for example, that is really doing something, but if you take the... And there is one bank in Germany, but most of the banks are staying out of this and basically letting... Other people take over means the CIT to take over their position with the customers. Then look, cash in transit, armored car, uh, Loomis, Brinks, G4S, uh, Prosegur, uh, the big guys. Sorry about, I should have explained that, sorry. And then, and then of course, to the banks. We can, uh, we, there we go, mostly direct, but we also see now where CIT is actually going through, you know, to the banks, and of course we work to partners. If you look on the on the uh, on our who are our customers again, I said it's it's in retail and bank, and you, as you can see here, it's all the big. We have all the big ticket players. We have some local players, but to a large extent, we are dealing with a large multinational uh, corporations, banks, uh, retailers, which of course means that we have again back to the the idea here that we have to control the route to market. And this is, of course, very important. So next, uh, uh, I would like to announce then uh, that uh, we have just recently received an order. And I think this is a very good example. It's a 14 million euro order, which is uh, basically split half is for hardware and half is for services. And this is a one, it's a one, it's a large retailer operating in several countries. And, and we have sold uh, in the contract this more than 1,000 devices. It's upgrading of, of uh, old devices. It's a, it's a whole, it's a whole um, if you say, package of different solutions that's, that we're offering to them, including then the, the software on the machines and, and, uh, and the functionalities. 
And why did, he, why did he choose us? And that's again back to that we have the capability of installation in service in several countries that we can work with them and actually do the complete service for them. And, this, and what this means also, as we move on and as we grow the business, it's probably going to be slightly more lumpy because we will get this big, when we get this, our contracts are getting bigger and bigger. And that means that, that when we get them, there are huge rollouts and you will see when you look at the quarter, there might be changes over the quarter depending how the schedule and how the rollouts are. But this is, but this is how we are, where we are moving. Uh, looking then at the, at the sales uh, and the trend, and uh, as you can see, 16 to 17, we had 8% 8, 8 growth, 16 to, um, sorry, six, yeah, uh, we grow 8% with a market growth, as we said, at 5%. And, and so far this year, we have grown with 2%. Now, what we see here, you can say it's only 2%, but actually when I look at the, if I look at two parameters, if I look at the European growth, it is considerably higher. If I look in the growth of number of units, it's much higher. Because there is also, we have a mix effect depending on the maturity of the market. We are, we are selling different types of equipment. Which means that the value of those, and that has to do with how much cash is actually used and what type of stores. So this, this has an impact. And you can say that the more advanced products, the more cash you have in the store, then the higher, if you say, the higher unit, co high unit price, which also drives up the value of what we're selling. And the more simple product is, of course, much less costly, but we will produce more units. So that's what you will see. Uh, if we look in, uh, in the Q3, uh, like I said, we have a sales growth of 2%. Uh, we are 21% of uh, year to date of the group. And, uh, and we have strong sales development continue in Middle East. And uh, we have, a, we have an, a partnership with a regional CIT company that's been press released before. And that, that relation is continue. But we also have a very good sales of closed cash management system, the, the safe pay system in Nordics. And I'm, I'm coming back to that because uh, when you look at, at the usage of cash, we, where we're quite unique in Sweden, and, uh, and, and you see what's going on, and I will show you what's going on. It's quite amazing. Um, and then if you look in Americas, uh, we had growth, uh, but the, it, was some, it, it was somewhat hampered by, by the US development, where again, we're, uh, we're primarily currently selling to the banks. We are, not re we, are, we are not working so much with the CITs in the US, we're working with the banks, and here we see a decline, and that is kind of impacting the whole. In Asia Pacific, it's still a small, small part of the sales. Uh, there is a lots of cash going on, but the maturity of the market, the quality of the notes, etc., make these applications quite, you know, quite difficult. The, actually, the machines get so bulky because you're talking about a daily take of 30,000, 40,000 notes. And, and if you, it's actually paper bills we're dealing with, and if you pile them in a bag, it's you know then it. So there, there are some challenges uh, in those countries, but that market is coming because of the high usage of cash. In Australia, which is more like Europe, we had a good development. So if we now take a step back and look at the market, so that was that was the Gunabo, which I'm then coming back to. But if you look at the market, as I said, the market is about notes and coins. It's about deposit and it's about dispensing. It's about, and, and, you, and you can either recycle and you can, you can recycle in the front office, which is what we call the safe pay, where you actually get the change, you put in cash and you, the machine give you change back. Or you can do this in the back office where you have a normal cash till and you bring it in the back. And then we have the closed cash handling system we, we, is a system where, where the safe pay is used in a way that nobody can touch the cash in the store or it's until it gets to the cash center of either the national bank or a CIT. That's the first time the cash is touched after it's put into the machine. So that's a complete cycle. Then we have envelope and coin roll systems that where you actually put in. This is the night depositories. That in the old days, you know, you go to the bank and you drop in the bag. 
those are getting more sophisticated and of course also to give out the coins the change for the for the retailers uh, where you actually change notes into coin rolls so you can give the change and then the big part as Henrik mentioned is now which is more and more important application monitoring and software and then the services uh, market size as we said our estimate that it's about 15 billion sec with a 5% growth uh, where we have a 9% market share now this map is what we call the battlefield a lot of people uh, you know is and i think this is a big part uh, where we get questions you know where are the cash where are we on the map and i, I just take a few minutes just also to show you that we understand where we are in the ecosystem and it's really important for us to to understand this if you if you start on the on the right side here here you can see here you have the traditional players uh, that are involved in payments and these payments of course at some point they can be they can be they can be online all the time or they can be cash payments transferred into electronic payments and on, on the end here in this side you have the, what's called the big techs you have the microsoft the hps uh, Vocalink, as an example, they they manage 80% of the payments in UK. All 80% of every payment in UK is managed by Vocalink. HP, Microsoft are running huge server systems where where actually the payment systems, the national payment systems, are run, and there are huge investment in this. Then, of course, we have the banks. The bank sits on their big data centers. I mean, today, if you take what are the expenses in the banks, to a large extent is really to run the data centers, to, you know, to keep the data and to transfer the data between the banks and, and, and huge investments. All of these players are, of course, controlled by the regulatory authorities, which means that to do things, it's, it's very cumbersome and, and, and complicated. There are changes now in, in, this, in this world, there are changes. For example, the regulators in EU now to open to re to uh, to make a to open a bank a proper bank with full licensing and, and authority used to take what said five years you know to, before you could have all approvals. That process now is cut down to maybe around one year. So the threshold, the cost of opening a new certified bank is much less. So, so the regulators, if you say, are putting pressure on the big banks that owns this. Now, in this, of course, we have capital. This is all about the capital flowing. The building, as I mentioned, on the platforms. And then, of course, you have the different channels, the different clearing houses of payments. The SWIFTs, the, the um, uh, well, and other, uh, uh, other uh, uh, payment providers or clearing houses. Then, if you look on the other side, I move to this slide now. Here you have, here you have things going on. One important part is the data owned by the customers. In Europe now, we have the PS2 directive. The PS2 directive means that you, as a customer, you own your data that sits in the bank's software, and you can decide if you want a third party. And the third party can be uh, regulated or non-regulated to actually manage your banking services. And now, of course, the banks, they are providing, they're not only transferring money, they're providing loans, financial services. So on this end, you have, you have a lot of people uh, investing in this and putting in these accelerators using artificial intelligence, trying to be more clever on how to evaluate customers, what, you know, what, how, how we, who, are, who is a good customer, who is a bad customer, how you actually optimize the flow of money, how do you try to connect. So lots of money uh, invested in this. And then, of course, you have the, all the fintechs, that it's, you know, you have the green tech and the clean tech, and now we have fintechs. And of course, it's lots of money in, in, you know, invested in the fintech. And here you have, of course, these new new peer-to-peer -peer lending systems, where you can, where actually, where you can move money, 
instead of going through the banks or traditional, you actually move it between peers, another system. And of course, we have all of these new currencies. The, you know, it's here example by the Bitcoin, but yeah, and, and here, as you know, this is being traded and, and it, you know, it has a value. And it's, we'll still, it's still a small player, but at some time, the blockchain technology is going to impact how we are transferring money and how we're doing, taking away many of these clearing houses and the functionality. As you know, it takes two to three days to transfer money from, you know, from Europe to US or somewhere. And I mean, that's you know, to shorten that time. And then on the other hand, of course, on the payments, where we are seeing, you have the GAFAs, you have the Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, trying to get in to take over the payments. And that they want you, know, that they want you to take it, take it over and that basically they, they manage your money and the transactions. So all of this, all of this is impacting our customers. And and it's and if, and it's impacting our customers' customers how you know how these payments are go are are done. When you have this in mind, and then you see what is happening on the currency. If you look on the cash in circulation, so you have all these trends and lots of money being invested in this, and then you look in the, on the cash in circulation, you can see that with a few expect, exceptions, Sweden being a strong one, the cash in circulation is increasing. In, 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 many, in, in most countries, cash in circulation is increasing. So it means that even with all the push and that everybody's saying cash is going away, this is the trend that actually is happening. And if you look at the euro, and I'm not going to go through the details, but you can see here, this, are, this is actually uh, the euro in circulation. And it's, it's a number of... Uh, uh, this is in millions of notes, and this is in value. And as you can see here, this, every, all, that, all the denominations are increasing in circulation. The only one that is not increasing is the 500 euro note, because the 500 euro note are being discontinued, because it's seen, it's not really used, it's, it's used by the bad guys. So it's, it's, really, it's really, and that will continue to decline as they are taken out of circulation. So we have the trends of the payments, but the reality is that 85% of the global transactions are made in cash. So with this, I just want to point out that Gunnebo, we are part, Gunnebo Cash Management, we are part, and you can say we're in the old school, we're in the old, old world, but we do understand what's going on in the new world, but we are acting in a reality, and, and I can tell you this, this is not going to go away. We see, and if, you, if somebody remember what number it said here on Sweden last year, I think it said 20%. 20 20 in 2018, now in Sweden, the, the, the usage of cash as a payment method has gone down to 13%. And, and wh why have, wh what has it been replaced with? So this is now the latest data from the Swedish Riksbank. And, and even with this, there are, about, there are about 5 million transactions made in Sweden every day. 13% are made in cash. And as you can see, um, the, the, and this, the question here is, uh, which means of payment have you used in the past month? And as you can see, you have a declining trend. And in 20, 2018, it was 61% that have used it in the last month. And what is that being replaced with? And I think here you can see the switch, the peer-to-peer -peer payment method that we have in Sweden. The interesting thing with this peer-to-peer -peer payment methods, I think it's going to take a very long time until you can use them across borders. Every country all the national banks are inventing their own system. So it means that even with this, when you go international transactions, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see that this peer-to-peer -peer is going to take a while before it actually is working. Now, I'm saying that we are part of the ecosystem. For you again, who were here last year, you, you saw this slide, and I, I will keep on showing it, <laughs> because this is where we are. 
we have a situation where we have basically four uh, involved parties. On top of it, you have, of course, us, the consumer. Um, we have the retailers, who are the, mostly the, they are takers of the cash from the consumer. And of course, you have the banks, which is more mo mostly than delivering the cash uh, through normally through an ATM to the consumer. And then, of course, this cash has to be moved between the retailer back to the bank. And this is something that the banks have outsourced and are continue to outsourcing into the CITs, the cash in transits, the Loomis, the Brinks, the G4S, Prosegur, what you have. Now, to get this system to work, you need to transfer the data because you need to know where is the cash. The cash that has to be, there is a physical movement of cash and there is an electronic movement of cash. What's happening today, those two movements are not synchronized anymore. Before, it used, used to be when you transferred, the, the cash didn't exist until it showed up on the next place. And this is back to, for example, the SWIFT free international transfer. Until it's confirmed, the cash was not there and it was not, could not be used. What's happening today, what's happening today is that the point of gravity is moving and the electronic, the electronic transformation or transfer of the money is disconnected with the physical transfer. And this is a very important part, what's, what is in the industry it's called either same day credit or provisional credit. Which means that when money is moved and especially a bit from the retailer, it, it, when you go from the consumer to the retailer, it's instant. Then you have the cash and it's instant. But when it goes from the retailer to the bank, the electronic transfer is in most countries now instant. So when something is recorded on that end, the same day the money show up on the bank account of that retailer, which means it can be used for, to buy things or you know, for other transactions while the physical movement could be one or two weeks later. And this service is, again, this provision credit, if you take Loomis as an example, they are themselves providing the provisional credit. So basically when the money is in with a retailer, it's owned by, it's owned by in this case, could be owned by Loomis or by the CIT. So they are taking the risk on the electronic transfer that is later a physical transfer. And that is why it's so important that, that we have secure solutions because if, if, if that, in that then there is a robbery and the cash is out, somebody is going to be short. And the second thing is that it's of course of apparent that the data transfer is correct because that is what everybody is counting on, that, that our machines will actually count the money correctly and that it's transferred into the bank. Now, if we look again, if, I, if we then look on this automation and we look at the install base, and this is a study, and this number is actually, it's, uh, this number is up to Q4 2017, so it's quite, it's quite recent. If you look on where, where are these type of machines installed, and this is the nice thing with this because the penetration of the market is so small. And, and as you can see, the largest number of machines installed is in the US. It's 150,000 machines. And then you can see it going down. So why it's in the US? Well, US number one was, was an early adopter. It's a large country with a large number of, of retailer and quick serve, and they have a risk profile because a lot of stores are open 24 seven. So you have a high risk profile of robberies and things like that. Now, there, uh, it's shown here that UK is the second largest, but it's kind of skewing the data because it's, it's one large retailer in UK that, that installed a lot of machines. So actually, when you, if, you, if you clear that out, then it's, it's a very low penetration also, also in UK. Now, this is in number of units. Interesting enough, if you then look, if you drill down one further level, and this is also explaining when I talk about R&D and our product portfolio, 
is that there are different type of equipment applied. And, when, and the interesting is that when you look at this and you can see that, and, and you see that the, you have the, the categories, a back office acceptor is a deposit where you can deposit in the back, it's done by the staff. A post acceptor is where you deposit something under the counter, it's called skimming the till, where you actually take, when you have like a, a 7-Eleven in US can only have $35 in change. So as soon as they're more than $35, they put the cash into the machine, which means that the bad guys, if they rob a 7-Eleven in the US, the most they can get is $35, which means they're not robbing them, it's not worth it. They, then maybe they take cigarettes or something else, but, but I mean, there is no cash to be taken. So that's the most, if you say the simple level. Then you have a back office recycler, it's a machine in the back, which is more like an ATM. It's a big machine where you can put in cash, when you close out your till, a normal till, and when you start your till in the morning, you get your change from this machine. You can also change to smaller denominations. And then you have a post recycler, which is the front office recycling. It was our safe pay system. If you go to start oil here and see, it, you, you know, you pay and the machine gives you cash back. So what you see here is that if you look on the countries, in America, it is... It is almost or it's over 90% is back office uh, deposit systems. If you take France, half of it is back office deposit systems, and half of it is actually front end post recyclers. And you can see Italy is 80% post recyclers. Why is this? Well, it's because of who has actually been driving the market, is that if it's been driven by the retailers or by the CIT. In America, it's to a large extent being driven by the CITs, and they like, they like the deposit system because then they can deliver cash. Because you have a recycler, they don't need a, the CIT so much. So they're, so they're different. But again, this shows that it's not one size for all or one, one, fit, one fit for all, which means that we need to have products in the different ranges. So, so what are we offering? So, uh, we are making the, we're building the smart safes. We have a long experience. We have own manufacturing, and we also have the testing department. We are building our own PCBs. The actually the which is the printed circuits boards is actually where it's it's the computers that we're building ourselves, and that is to ensure. Uh, lifetime management of components. Uh, we are doing, of course, the products uh, with a complete cash cycle, own technology, and we're also using third-party technology in some of our uh, machines. We are the industry experts. We have our own R&D. Uh, we have our own application uh, software and our own monitoring software. And we do the service and installation, like we said, we had owned people in 26 countries with partners in other countries. Now I'd like to do the next uh, release here. Um, and this is uh, that we are, as we speak now, launching uh, our next generation platform, which we call AMA, uh, Easy Modular Assisted. This platform is also, it's launched with our own specially made computer. So we are we actually we are doing the assembly of, of the parts. It's a specially made optimized computer. And why why do we need to do this? This is back to the security and the and the safety and the transfer of the money. To be able that we hundred percent can control control the quality of it and that we have a software that is easy adoptable that can fit into the customer's processes. And this machine is run, uh, this software can be run both on the Linux, which is our standard if the customer don't have a requirement, but we can also run it on, on Windows because if you connect directly to a bank, some many of the banks are actually requiring that you, that you run on Windows because that is, and most ATMs, for example, are run on Windows. So that's we, and this is something we're, we're very proud of, and this is now gradually being moved on and will be used for the entire platform of products that we have. We're also launching a new recycler, and this is a kind of a unique uh, recycler because it can be used both into, into the banks and with a large retailer. It's our most high-end product. It has, I, I would say today, it has the highest capacity and flexibility in the industry. 
uh, it can take up to eight denominations of currencies, and this is very important because in many countries they are requiring more than one one currency. So here in this we can run two or three currencies. Uh, 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 sorry, we can take 16 denominations. Sorry, we have eight cassettes, we can take 16 denominations. So we can run several currencies in parallel, which is which is become a requirement. And like I said, this can be either be uh, used as a as a teller-assisted device in an open bank branch, or it can be used in the back office of a big retailer. Then uh, what we're also doing is that in the smaller range, and and uh, we are now we have now consolidated our range because of when we acquired Cyan, Cyan came with one range, and we had several ranges in Gunnebon. We have now consolidated the small range into into one family which of course is giving us an economy of scale. And it's also giving us more flexibility. And these this are now running on the new AMA software with our new, with our new computer uh, base. And, and this is of course now making it very easy when we get into, we can adopt and give exactly the machine into our partners what they need. So when I talk about, about the, the software, so we have the software there is actually an application software on the machine itself. And, and then the machine, you have to in interface. The operator, the clerk, or whatever has to interface, or the CIT, when I come to the machine, have to interface the machine. This is, again, that's what we, is run on this AMA platform. It has a screen on the machine. And of course, this is very important, because I can tell you there are many people at night that are trying to manipulate the machine, pulling out the plug, you know, putting in, pulling out the notes. There's a lot of cleverness uh, at nights when there is no customers trying to fool the system, which means that this machine has to be independent if it's connected or not. But then, of course, like I said, the important thing is then to transfer. So, we, of course, we have encryption and we transfer money into the cloud and then it goes into our monitoring software, which is the software that is then connected to the bank or to the CIT. And this, and this we are calling cash control. However, what we see now is that this is moving into the GBS platform that Henrik was talking about as, as the next level. And here in this, you can do all the monitoring of the machine, you can do you can have errors, you can download new software, you can find out if there's a problem with the machine. And on some of our machines, we can more than 70% of the errors in the machine can be managed remotely. So we don't need to go and visit the site. So what are the concerns and trends? Well, uh, for the retailers, it's of course fraud. I, I talked about that and theft. But it's also about checkout management work and workforce process and cash flow optimization. Like I say, the same day credit, of course, uh, addressing the cash flow. The checkout management is, of course, that we have, if you have a front end system, you automate the payments, you can spend more time on, on, on the next customer, not, not sitting in the cash till changing money. The trends we see is all about the customer experience, which, of course, the retailers need to keep the customers in the stores. There is a, it's of course also integration, how the payment system is integrated in the post system and in the store systems. And then it's, it's of course also into, into mobile solutions, you know, that you can actually pay and that we are seamlessly integrated also with card payments or, or Apple Pay or whatever that you can use it into the same system. So the flexibility. So what are we doing about that? Well, we are providing hardware solutions that are optimized for the risk profile, type of store, cash usage, and the CIT process. That's why we have a range of products that can meet that. We have software solutions that integrate data from the POS to our machine to do reconciliation between the sales of a clerk and, and to the person so you can immediately know that if there is a wrong counting. And it's also giving the data to the CIT. And, and we are together with the partners providing complete you know, cash service solutions, including provision credit monitoring of the complete cash cycle. How will end-to-end -end organization change this? Well, we, we are now getting dedicated people that we can train 
as industry expert to be you know to working with end customers and partners i mean even the big players that are coming and typically from the cit the cash in transit they don't understand how to apply a smart safe in their system we need to train them uh, we can make we can make decision basically on the full value chain. If we have more space in the factory, we can be more aggressive on a particular job. Uh, if if we have space and it's not going to rub off on the price, we can make instant decisions. Uh, and it's also country independent. We can have a, we can have pan European agreements with the same price in every country. We have competitive uh, hubs of expertise. And of course, we can have we can now do segment approach, which is which is an important part for us. So, how are we growing? Like I said, partnerships, software, and R and D. That's the key. Uh, that's the key for us. And the key the takeaway: we will uh, we will lead and co-develop the future cash management uh, together with our partners. We have a focused and dedicated team. That we, where we can in the act as the industry experts. And investments in R&D and subsequent new product launches, software, cloud integration, continue to be our key differentiator. And that's, as, a, as a closing comment, is that in 2018, we have executed the largest rollout ever in Sweden uh, um, with, uh, and in a country where the usage of cash is dropping down to 13%. And we are, right now as we speak, have the largest contract we ever had. So again, even when cash goes away, cash is still going to be there. It's, going to, it's a different task and it needs higher level of automation. Thank you very much.